we have learned about the first process skills called observing, which is the skill of getting information with the use of our five senses. We have also got to know the two types of observations, which are the qualitative observation and the quantitative observation. Qualitative observation is an observation that shows the description or quality of an object, while the quantitative observation shows the number or measurement and quantity of an object. Now, we will be discussing the second process skills. Skill number two, measuring. Measuring is the skill of determining the exact size or measurement of something. For us to get the exact measurement of an object, we need to use to get the different measuring tools. Some of these are the meter, weighing scale, thermometer, ruler, speedometer, measuring spoons, measuring cups, graduated cylinder, and beaker. These are the quantities that we are measuring in our daily lives. Number one, length. In measuring the length of an object, we can use meter, meter stick, ruler, or tape measure. The SI or the standard unit of length is meter. Number two, time. Stopwatch is a tool that can be used to measure time. The standard unit for time is second. Number three, force or weight. Spring scale and weighing scale are the tools that we can use to measure force or weight of an object. And the standard unit of force is Newton. Number four, temperature. Thermometers are tools to be used if you want to measure an object's temperature. Its standard unit is Kelvin, but we commonly use degrees Celsius. However, in the US, the unit of temperature that they use is the Fahrenheit. Number five, mass. Balances such as platform balance and double or triple beam balance are used to measure the mass of an object. We use the grams for its standard unit but kilograms could be used for larger objects. Number six, volume. A graduated cylinder is used to measure the volume of liquids and irregular shaped solids. Liter is the standard unit of volume for liquid and cubic meter for irregularly shaped solid. When measuring volume of liquids, get eye level and always use the eye protection. Liquids could splatter up into your eyes. Beakers can also be used to measure the volume of liquids. 7. Speed A car's speedometer can be used to measure its speed. The standard unit for speed is the meter per second. However, kilometer per hour can also be used for faster objects. Number 8. Other measuring tools In cooking and baking that needs the exact amount of any ingredients or recipe, we can use the measuring spoons and measuring cups. Remember, when measuring, you need to use the measuring tools to get the exact measurement of an object. Skill number three, estimating. Estimating is the skill of giving a tentative, rough or approximate measurement of an object. The word tentative means not final and approximate meaning not exact. An example of this is by using your body parts to get the tentative measurement of an object. We use the talampakan, dipa, piranggot, bisig, dangkal for estimating the length of an object. It is an estimation because we do not have the same length of these body parts. For estimating the volume of an object, we can use salok, saro, and mangkok. For mass, we have the dakot, guhit, kagitna, gatang, and kabal. And for estimating the time, we can use the mata, saglit, and sandali. Reminder, Estimating is not exact, so if you are making an experiment and you are preparing the materials, the skill that you need to use is measuring, not estimating, if you wanted to get a valid result of your experiment. Skill number four, inferring. Inferring is the skill of using what you have observed to explain what has happened. Inferring uses clues from words and pictures to understand the story or the situation. Words that we can use when inferring are, I think, maybe, I infer, my guess is, it could be that, this could mean that. For example, look at the picture on the right. What could be your observation? By just looking at the picture of the boy, we can say that he is scratching his head. The observation will be, the boy is scratching his head. To practice inferring, think of the possible reason why the boy is scratching his head. 
you can make a statement such as, maybe because he has many likes. Or ikuto. Look at the next picture. What could be your observation from the picture? Yes, the boy is crying while holding his right cheek. How will you make an inferring statement? What do you think is the reason why the boy is crying while holding his cheek? Your inferring statement that shows inferring might be, I think the boy is having a toothache. Skill number five, predicting. Predicting is the skill of forming an idea of an expected outcome based on observations or experiences. If inferring tries to explain the reason why an object is like that, predicting on the other hand tries to explain the outcome. In inferring, you are giving what you think is the cause. In predicting, you are trying to give what the outcome or the, the effect is. For example, we can observe from the picture that dark clouds is getting in front of the sun or that the sky is getting dark. Your prediction or the process of predicting will be, it will rain. In the next picture, we can observe that the girl is studying or doing her homework. What do you think will happen after? Or what will be your prediction? Maybe she will be an honor student or she will get a high grade. Is an appropriate prediction here. Skill number six, communicating. Communicating is the skill of telling or sharing to others what you know by speaking, writing, drawing a picture, or creating graphs. Communicating means sharing your ideas in any ways that you can. Just like this picture, the girl is communicating her ideas to the group by speaking or telling them. We can also share our ideas by posting on our social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and many others. It can also be reporting in front of the class just like the boy in the picture. It can also be by any forms of arts like painting or drawing, dancing or singing, and writing a poem or a narrative report. Skill number seven, classifying. Classifying is the skill of grouping or categorizing objects or events based on a pattern of evidences. Classifying means grouping objects based on categories. For an instance, in the picture, there are different shapes and color. If we are asked to group them based on shapes, there will be two groups. One for the rectangular shape and the other for circular shape. Let's try to classify the following objects according to the base of matter that they belong. So, we will have three groups for the three bases of matter. Yakult will be in liquid, sugar in solid, oxygen for gas, vinegar for liquid, nitrogen for gas, crayons for solid, cooking oil for liquid, rock is a solid, and carbon dioxide is a gas. We have done classifying or grouping their base of matter. Skill number 8. Gathering Data Gathering data is the skill needed to record observation you have detected during the experiment. Gathering or recording is a skill needed to record the observations well. Data are the results of our experiments. And in doing an activity or experiment, we need to record all observations that we have. It is very important for us to have the final answer for the experiment. In gathering data, we try to answer the question, what are the observations I can get from this experiment? Skill number 9, Analyzing Analyzing is the skill of identifying patterns or trends in their observations or measurements and noticing related changes. Analyzing means identifying patterns based on our observations or noticing related changes. It tends to answer the question, how are these data connected to one another? Skill number 10, Interpreting Interpreting is the skill of explaining observations through graphs, diagrams, and tables. From the data you have recorded during an experiment, you need to interpret them before you can make a final answer to the problem that you wanted to solve. Interpreting answers the questions, what are these data stand for? And what is the meaning of this data? For the last three skills, gathering data, analyzing, and interpreting data, we will be applying them for the next topic. You will try to practice applying them in doing an experiment. Now, applying what you have learned from this topic, you can now answer page number 3 of your module 1 entitled, Looking Back, Think and Pair. Read and follow the direction properly and if you have questions, just inform me.